a very good evening aspirants now before getting into newspaper discussion i have an interesting announcement for you aspirants temporarily we are going to stop the daily newspaper analysis from day after tomorrow don't worry instead of daily newspaper analysis we are going to start a new initiative to help you clear 2023 upsc prelims in this new initiative we are going to discuss around 50 to 60 current affairs related prelims questions for every month starting from june 2022 by listening to this single video you will be able to revise all the current affairs of that particular month this will be very helpful to you clear upsc prelims further information about this initiative will be communicated in the upcoming days with this happy note now let's get into the daily news analysis today i am going to cover important news articles from the hindu newspapers dated 26th and 27th of march 2023 displayed here are the list of news articles that we will be discussing today you can go through it and a kind request to you all those who haven't yet subscribed our youtube channel do subscribe and hit the bell icon button to get regular notifications regarding our kind of these videos with this let's get into our first news article discussion now look at this article from yesterday's newspaper this news article says that in support of the earth har various important buildings in the cities of mumbai kolkata and new delhi turned off their lights okay this is about this news article given here now in this context let us see important points about earth har from the prelims perspective see earth har is an annual global event observed on the last saturday of march for the year 2023 the global event was observed on 25th march that is on last saturday during this event people around the world turn off their lights and other non essential electrical appliances for one hour see the earth har event aims to raise awareness about environmental issues such as climate change and biodiversity loss now when did this earth har event start see earth har started in 2007 in sydney australia this event was started by WWF that is Worldwide Fund for Nature. As part of Earth Hour, the WWF encourages people to turn off their lights for one hour to draw attention to climate change. After the event started in 2007, the event has grown to become a global phenomenon. Every year, millions of people from over 180 countries participate in this event. Since I mentioned about Worldwide Fund for Nature that is WWF, let us see some points about WWF. WWF is an international non-governmental organization that works to protect the planet's natural resources and biodiversity. WWF was founded in 1961. Since then, the WWF has grown to become one of the largest and most influential conservation organizations in the world. The WWF focuses on a wide range of issues including addressing climate change, preventing deforestation, conserving endangered species, conserving critical habitats, promoting sustainable development, preventing overfishing and addressing illegal wildlife trade. Another important exam related fact that you should know about WWF is that WWF publishes the famous Living Planet Report. See the report is published every two years in which the health of the planet and the impact of human activities on nature are talked about. The Living Planet Report is based on the Living Planet Index created by WWF that is Worldwide Fund for Nature. Okay. Now coming back to Earth Hour, every year the WWF announces a theme. For the year 2022, the theme was Shape Our Future. But the theme of Earth Hour 2023 has not been announced yet. So we have to wait and see what is going to be the theme. See the Earth Hour is a symbolic effort of our collective action to counter climate change. Now from the prelims examination, you must know the difference between Earth Day and Earth Hour. Yes, there is another global event called Earth Day and it is different from Earth Hour. When Earth Hour is observed on the last Saturday of March, Earth Day is observed on 22nd April every year. Earth Day is a day to celebrate the planet and to promote environmental production. Earth Day focuses on a wide range of environmental issues including climate change, pollution and deforestation. Earth Day was first celebrated in 1970. Right now, the Earth Day is coordinated by EarthDay.org. Know that EarthDay.org is a non-profit organization. It was formerly known as Earth Day Network. Okay. Now that's all regarding this discussion. In this discussion, we saw a few facts about Earth Hour. Then we saw about Worldwide Fund for Nature. And finally, we saw some difference between Earth Day and Earth Hour. 
see this topic is very much important for your prelims exam so make note of each and every points that we discussed now with these key points in mind let us move on to the next news article discussion now look at this article from the text and context page this article is talking about the imf bailouts we all know imf has confirmed a 3 billion us dollars bailout plan for sri lanka's struggling economy apart from this imf is also in negotiations with pakistan for a 1.1 billion us dollars bailout plan so in this context we will see why nations are opting for imf bailouts then what is the benefit for the nations in the imf bailout and other implications now before getting into discussion the syllabus relevant to this topic is given here you can go through it now first let us see why do nations seek imf bailout generally countries seek help from the imf that is the international monetary fund when their economies face a major macroeconomic risk that too mostly in the form of currency crisis for instance both sri lanka and pakistan have witnessed rapid domestic price rise and depreciation of their currency this means that the exchange value of their currencies dropped steeply against the us dollar the major cause of such currency crisis is the gross mismanagement of nation's currency by the central bank now you may think it is the duty of the central bank to properly manage a country's currency right so what led to the mismanagement of the currency by the central bank see the currency mismanagement happens often under the influence of the ruling government i will explain it in simple terms see government now and then will introduce populist schemes like free stuff subsidies etc and to fund these schemes government will force the central bank to create fresh money this means that the governments will force the central bank to print more money to fund the schemes so if the government gets fresh money from the central bank and it spends on the scheme it results in a rapid rise of the overall money supply in the economy if there is too much money demand will be increased in the economy and this in turn will cause the prices to rise across the economy and the exchange value of currency to drop okay now what are the consequences of this price rise and exchange value drop firstly the fall in the value of currency destroys the confidence in currency so it will affect the economic activity this is because people will be hesitant to accept the currency in exchange for goods and services secondly foreigners will be unwilling to invest in an economy where the value of currency fluctuates in an unpredictable manner and this is the first cause for an economic crisis which is nothing but gross mismanagement of nation's currency by the central bank and the consequences of it secondly a country's domestic economic policies can also have an adverse impact on its currency exchange rate and foreign exchange reserves here we can take the example of india itself our domestic policy before 1991 reforms led to the decrease in the forex reserves but our domestic economic policies did not result in an economic crisis because we adopted lpg reforms in 1991 for some countries it will result in economic crisis okay so the second cause for an economic crisis is an domestic economic policies thirdly bad luck can also contribute to a crisis in the case of sri lanka a decrease in foreign tourists visiting the country led to a steep fall in the flow of us dollars into the nation okay these are the causes of an economic crisis and an economic crisis is the reason why countries seek imf bailout see imf bailout means imf lends money to the countries the lending often will be in the form of special drawing rights and this financial support will be used by countries for various purposes depending on their individual circumstances generally imf bailout helps the countries to meet the external debt and other obligations then to purchase essential imports and to increase the exchange value of the currencies okay now before concluding our discussion let us see the conditions for imf bailout so usually imf imposes conditions on countries before it lends any money to the countries for example imf may ask a country to implement certain structural reforms as a condition to receive imf loans see there are mixed feelings regarding this condition for availing imf loans now let us see the side which opposes the conditions the two main reasons for opposing the imf conditions is that firstly imf's reform conditions are too tough on the public secondly there is a controversy regarding the decision taken by the imf this is because the officials of imf are appointed by the governments of various countries so many people think that imf's decisions are influenced by international politics okay these are the two reasons for opposing the conditions for imf bailout loans now let us see the side which supports 
the lending policies of IMF. See, supporters argue that conditions are essential for the success of IMF lending. This is because the countries that seek IMF bailout are usually in the crisis due to the policies adopted by their governments. So, it will be useless to lend money when the policies of the government remain unchanged. Secondly, corruption is a major reason why conditions of IMF are essential. As we all know, IMF will lend money to get out of economic crisis. But what happens if this money go to poor institutions which suffer from high corruption? It will be a waste effort, no? So, these are the reasons why some are saying that conditions for IMF bailout is necessary. And that's all regarding this discussion. In this discussion, we saw about why the countries are opting for IMF bailouts. Then we saw about the causes of economic crisis in a country. Then we moved on to see about IMF bailouts. And finally, we saw some points regarding the conditions for IMF bailout. See, this topic is very much important for your mains exam. So, make note of each and every points that we discussed. Now, with these key points in mind, let us move on to the next news article discussion. Now, look at this article from the editorial page. Recently, a Lok Sabha MP from Vayanad constituency of Kerala was disqualified after the conviction in a defamation case. This editorial is written in this context. In this editorial, the author shares his opinion about the Section 8, Class 3 of the Representation of People Act, 1951. And the author also points out the issues with the famous Lily Thomas judgment. In the end, the author shares his opinion about the issue of criminal defamation. See, this editorial is written by Mr. P.D.T. Achari, who is a former Secretary General of Lok Sabha. So, his thoughts and opinions are important for UPSC examination. So, in our discussion today, we will look in detail about the important points discussed in the editorial. Now, before getting into discussion, the syllabus relevant to this topic is given here. You can go through it. Now, let's start with Section 8 of RPA Act 1951. See Section 8 of the Representation of People Act 1951 lists out various offences. So, a conviction based on the offences in Section 8 of RPA Act 1951 will result in the disqualification of the legislators. As I mentioned earlier, this editorial focuses on the Section 8, Class 3 of RPA Act 1951. Here, I have displayed the exact text of Section 8, Class 3 of RPA Act 1951. See, this section says that if a legislator is convicted for an offence and faces imprisonment of more than two years, then the legislator shall be disqualified. Further, this section also says that the same legislator will be barred from contesting in elections for six years after his release from prison. Okay, this is about Section 8, Class 3 of RPA Act 1951. For a layman like us, upon reading Section 8, Class 3, we will assume that Okay, if a person is convicted and the prison sentence is more than two years, then that person will be disqualified immediately. Actually, this is not the actual meaning of the Section 8, Class 3. If you notice the text carefully, it has the word shall be disqualified. Here, since the words shall be disqualified is used, it does not mean instantaneous disqualification. The author of the editorial is of the opinion that if the lawmakers who authored the Representation of People Act 1951 when to have instantaneous disqualification of legislators, they might have used the words shall stand disqualified instead of the words shall be disqualified. Okay, since the section class 3 has the words shall be disqualified, it means that after the courts convicts a legislator and provides a prison sentence of more than two years, then the particular legislator shall be disqualified by some authority. Now, who is that authority? See, Secretary General of a House of Parliament or Secretary of a State Legislator cannot be granted such power. This is because the constitution does not have any provision that provides such power to the Secretary General of a House of Parliament or Secretary of a State Legislator. According to the author, this authority could be provided to the President. He substantiates his opinion by quoting Article 103 of the constitution. Before expanding on the author's argument, let us first familiarize ourselves with Article 103. See, Article 103 is linked to Article 102. So, before seeing Article 103, we will first see about Article 102. Here, I have displayed the Article 102 of the Indian Constitution. Article 102 provides for the disqualification of members of Parliament. Here, look at Class 1 subclass E. It says that the members of Parliament can be disqualified based on the law framed by the Parliament. So, based on this provision only, Section 8 of RPA 1951 was framed. Now, look at Article 103. It says that if an issue or question arises in regards to the disqualification of members of parliament according to Article 102, Class 1, 
then that issue shall be referred to the president and the president can give his decision and this decision of the president is final article 103 also says that if the president before giving his decision must consult the election commission and the president must act according to the opinion shared by the election commission okay this is about article 103 now coming back to the argument of the author now we know that article 103 gives powers to the president when there is a question regarding disqualification of a mp under article 102 class 1 and section 8 of rpa 1951 was framed by parliament under the power given to it by article 102 class 1 sub class e of the constitution so according to the author when there is an issue in case of disqualification of an mp under rpa 1951 the president must be referred to and his decision should be final apart from this the author also refers to the consumer education and research society versus union of india 2009 case this is also referred by the author to support his argument in this case the supreme court mentioned that even if a legislator is convicted by the court and provided a sentence more than 2 years the particular legislator shall be disqualified only after it is referred to the president okay so this is the first thing highlighted in the article by the author that is secretary general of a house of parliament or secretary of a state legislator cannot be granted power to disqualify any legislator and it is vested with president okay the author also highlights some flaws in the famous lilly thomas case judgment before seeing the flaws in the judgment we will first look at the background see the lilly thomas case of 2013 struck down section 8 class 4 of the rpa 1951 according to this provision if the convicted legislator appeals within 3 months then the disqualification will also be on hold and it will be on hold until the convicted legislator has exhausted all judicial remedies in lower state and supreme court of india in this lilly thomas case the supreme court struck down this provision the court while striking down this provision mentioned that it is doing this to maintain a parity between candidates who are contesting in elections and city members now let me explain this statement clearly with an example assume that this example happens before the lilly thomas case let us imagine a person a and b are contesting in an election and assume both of them are accused in different cases now the court provides judgment for person a before the election and declares that he is a convict so this results in disqualification of person a from contesting elections now coming to another person see a person b contests in the election and wins so person b becomes a legislator after that the courts provide a judgment naming person b as a convict here person b is not immediately disqualified he is provided a 3 months grace period under section 4 of representation of people act 1951 so in that period if person b just files for an appeal then he will not be disqualified by looking at this example you can see that there is a clear disparity between a candidate contesting for elections and a sitting legislator so to remove this disparity only in the lilly thomas case the supreme court struck down section 8 class 4 of the representation of people act 1951 so the author is of the opinion that there must be some exemption provided for the sitting members of the legislator he says that if a sitting member of legislator if convicted is immediately disqualified according to the lilly thomas judgment then it will result in some issues the first issue is that a sudden disqualification will result in a lot of chaos and confusion now let's imagine the convicted person is disqualified and a new person is elected from the constituency but after some time the convicted person provides his innocence through an appeal in a high court now what happens in this case it will create chaos and confusion right so this is the first issue secondly in case of sudden disqualification the people of the constituency will lose their representative and finally the constitution itself provides some exemption to the sitting members of legislature under article 103 so striking down section 8 class 4 to remove the disparity between the candidate and the sitting member is not valid okay these are some of the flaws in the lilly thomas judgment highlighted by the author and finally the author also shares his opinion about criminal defamation he feels that criminal defamation finds no place in a modern democracy like india he also mentions that countries like the united kingdom the usa and even sri lanka have done away with criminal defamation he says that in india mainly during elections the tensions will run very high so this might result in some cases our political leaders might make some humorous or off the cuff remarks so the author feels people must learn to laugh at themselves and remove criminal defamation like in other mature democracies
and that's all regarding this discussion in this discussion we saw in detail about section 8 class 3 of the representation of people act 1951 then we saw how the section 8 class 3 can be interpreted then we saw about article 103 and finally we saw some points about the flaws in lily thomas judgment now with these key points in mind let us move on to the next news article discussion now look at this article from the text and context page it says that a united kingdom based firm has found a bio transformation technology this technology will help to alter the state of plastic and make it biodegradable okay this is the background now in this discussion we will understand the points provided in this article now first we will see what is bio transformation technology first of all know that bio transformation is the process of transforming the polymer into a substrate that are accessible for microbes if we take plastics the bio transformation technology will help to transform the plastic into a biodegradable plastic so bio transformation technology is a novel approach to ensure the plastics that are escaping from refuse streams are processed efficiently and broken down see bio transformation technology is used to change the state of a regular polythene with the help of bio transformation technology a regular polythene is treated with a bio transformation additive that is shortly known as bio t so this helps in the biodegradation of the plastic now we will see how does bio transformation technology work as i mentioned earlier with the help of bio transformation technology bio t additive are added to the plastic during the manufacturing process see the final plastic product will retain the properties of regular polythene and can be recycled like regular polythene but because of using bio transformation technology the plastic is also fully biodegradable in the natural environment okay see there are some three phases associated with the plastics that are made from bio transformation technology i will explain all the three phases using an example now assume that you order a product from amazon and it is delivered to you let us imagine the product is wrapped in bio t plastic so the maximum time period for which you can use this plastic cover is the product service life of the plastic so during this phase the bio t technology is dormant and the packaging will retain all of the functionalities of regular polythene it can also be recycled just like regular soft polythene packaging so this is the first phase that is the product service life of the plastic now if you unpack the product and leave the plastic behind and after few days the product life of the plastic cover is over now what will happen the plastic will be exposed to natural environmental conditions such as sunlight air and water this in turn will cause the plastic material to self destruct now how does this happen see the biot technology attacks the crystalline and amorphous region of the polymer structure so this will transform the plastic into a waxy substance that is no longer a plastic know that this wax like substance is not harmful to the environment okay this is a second phase that is the plastic is transformed into an waxy substance with the help of natural environmental conditions such as sunlight air and water okay now in the third phase bacteria and fungi in the natural environment digest the wax and break it down into carbon dioxide water and humus so there will be any microplastic in the environment okay these are the three phases associated with plastics that are made using bio transformation technology now why do we need this technology see india is generating around 3.5 billion kg of plastic waste annually and the per capita plastic waste generation has doubled in the past 5 years of this one third comes from packaging waste so if we could replace the conventional plastic packaging with the bio t plastic we could minimize the hazardous effects of plastic in the environment also many big giants especially in e-commerce sector use a lot of plastic for packaging their products for instance e-commerce giant amazon generated an estimated 321 million kilograms of plastic from packaging waste in 2021 alone this is a result of billions of boxes it shipped to its customers globally so this is enough plastic to circle the earth over 800 terms as air pillows besides this food packaging and healthcare industries are the two prime sectors that could use this technology to reduce waste yes when we use this bio transformation technology the cost will go up but the increase in cost is relatively small compared to conventional plastic that does not contain bio transformation technology now do we have any similar bio transformation technology in india see few indian firms in food and packaging industries 
deploy such technologies. Then in the healthcare and pharma industries, this technology provides biodegradable solutions for products like diapers, sanitary napkins, facial pads, etc. Here the author also talks about how we are dealing with plastics in India. See earlier we had the plastic waste management rules 2021. These rules prohibited single use plastic items which have low utility and high littering potential. Then last year the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change announced a plastic waste management amendment rules 2022. These rules gave instructions on extended producer responsibility for plastic packaging. See the term extended producer responsibility means the responsibility of a producer for the environmentally sound management of the product until the end of its life. So the product manufacturers have to take responsibility for the entire life cycle of their products from production to disposal. Okay, this is about plastic waste management rules. The article also talks about few alternative packaging options. See other than plastics, we can also use jute or paper based packaging. This could also build sustainability within the paper industry. Then there is one more benefit. See to produce plastics, we import ethylene solutions. So if we consider other packaging options, we can save on the import bill on ethylene solutions. See recently the government of Tamil Nadu organized a national expo and conference of startups. This is to raise awareness on alternatives to single use plastics. The alternatives showcased during this conference were made using coir, bagges, rice and wheat bran, plant and agricultural residue, banana and arca leaves, jute and cloth. So know that there are so many alternatives to plastic in packaging. Now that's all regarding this discussion. This discussion we saw about biotransformation technology that is used to make plastics. Then we saw about three phases associated with plastics that are made with biotransformation technology. Then we saw about the need of biotransformation technology and finally we saw some points regarding how India are dealing with plastics. Now with these key points in mind let us move on to the next news article discussion. Now look at this news article. Yesterday launch vehicle Mark 3 that is LVM3 of ISRO has placed 36 one web satellites into an orbit. Know that this is LVM's second commercial launch. With the placement of 36 one web satellites the first generation constellation got completed. So this enabling the UK based company to initiate global coverage this year. Okay. This is about this news article given here. Now in this backdrop let us quickly go through LVM3 that is launch vehicle Mark 3. LVM3 which was earlier called as GSLV MK3 is an expandable space launch vehicle. It was designed, developed and currently operated by the Indian Space Research Organization that is ISRO. See LMV3 will help to launch satellites and other space objects into geosynchronous transfer orbits. Know that LMV3 is 49.13 meter tall and it is the tallest among all other vehicles of ISRO. Know that LVM3 is a three stage launch vehicle with a lift off mass of 420 tons. The LMV3 has made 13 launches till now. As I mentioned earlier, the recent launch is the second commercial launch of LVM3. Now talking about the stages in LVM3, the first stage comprises of S139 solid booster with 138 ton propellant and 4 liquid strap on motors with 40 ton propellant. Then the second stage is liquid engine carrying 40 ton of liquid propellant. And the third stage is the indigenously built cryogenic upper stage carrying 15 ton of cryogenic propellants. Now with this information we will see the difference between PSLV and launch vehicle Mark 3. See LVM3 has the capability to put a heavier payload in the orbit than the PSLV. See PSLV can carry satellites up to a total weight of 200 kg into space and it can reach up to an altitude of 600 to 900 km. Whereas LVM3 can carry weight up to 5000 kg and it can reach up to 36000 km. In the second difference is that PSLV is designed mainly to deliver earth observation or remote sensing satellites and the PSLV deliver satellites to low earth polar orbits whereas LVM3 has been designed for launching communication satellites. LVM3 delivers satellites into a high elliptical orbit, geosynchronous transfer orbit and geosynchronous earth orbit. Okay. And the third difference is that PSLV is a four stage launch vehicle whereas LVM3 is three stage launch vehicle. Now talking about the upgrades brought by LVM3, 
See the LVM3 is capable of lifting much heavier satellites than GSLV Mark II. See LVM3 is having a bigger cryogenic upper stage and a larger first stage. So this enables LVM3 to lift off much heavier satellites than GSLV MK2. And know that both GSLV MK2 and LVM3 are three stage launch vehicles. The GSLV MK2 can place up to 2500 kg in geosynchronous orbits and up to 5000 kg to low earth orbit. Whereas LVM3 can lift 4000 kg to geosynchronous transfer orbit and up to 8000 kg to low earth orbit. Okay, and that's all regarding this discussion. In this discussion, we saw about launch vehicle Mark 3, and then we saw about the difference between PSLV and launch vehicle Mark 3. Now, with these key points in mind, let us move on to the next news article discussion. Now, look at this science page article from yesterday's newspaper. It speaks about the science behind sleep. The article says that a person is at more risk of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease if that person does not get a proper sleep. Now in this context let us understand the science behind sleep and we will also try to look into the points given in this news article see an adult needs 8 hours of proper sleep and this 8 hours is roughly 1/3 of a day so this means that humans spend about 1/3 of their lives asleep before the 1950s people believed that sleep was a passive activity so they thought that the body and brain are inactive during sleep but later it was found that parts of our brain are quite active during sleep so what happens when you don't sleep well that is when you create a sleep debt once your debt builds up you may feel physically and mentally exhausted the news article says that some great personalities endorse having little sleep to showcase their meta human nature but in reality it cannot happen and even if it happens forcefully then it means that the person might get health issues now this brings us to the question how long should we sleep See a healthy sleep means 16 hours a day for infants then about 12 hours for toddlers and preschoolers whereas the teenagers need about 9 hours of sleep and adults need 7 to 8 hours also pregnant people often need more sleep during the first trimester of their pregnancy now coming to the mechanism of our sleep see sleep occurs in five stages that is wake n1 n2 n3 and rem Here REM stands for rapid eye movement. See the stages from N1 to N3 are considered non-rapid eye movement. That is N REM sleep. Approximately 75% of sleep is spent in N REM stages. That too, the majority is spent in the N2 stage. See the entire cycle from N1 to REM is called one sleep cycle, and this lasts for 90 minutes to 120 minutes. So basically during an entire night we will have around 4 to 5 sleep cycles. During one sleep cycle non REM sleep happens first and the last stage of non REM sleep is N3 that is when you sleep deeply. So it is hard to wake up from this stage of sleep. Now coming to REM sleep REM sleep happens for an hour after falling asleep. During REM sleep you tend to have vivid dreams. Now look at this image these are the changes that happen in our body during the each stage of sleep cycle see our body functions are quite active during our sleep and apart from this when we sleep our body take time to repair the muscles grow bones it manages hormones and the brain starts the memories so if we are deprived of sleep then it may affect these functions the article talks about some experiments conducted on rats The results found that the rats that were deprived of sleep had higher fatty deposition on their liver than those slept well. Also experiments suggest that people taking more than 1 hour of nap during the day are also at high risk. So as parents try to have a good sleep and good sleep will improve our efficiency in the preparation. And that's all regarding this discussion. In this discussion we saw about the science behind sleep and we saw about the mechanisms of sleep. Now with these key points in mind let us move on to the next news article discussion. Now look at this FAQ page article from yesterday's newspaper. This FAQ article talks about PM Mitra scheme. Here PM Mitra stands for Prime Minister's Mega Integrated Textile Regions and Apparel Scheme. Now suddenly this is in news because the government recently announced that 7 mega textile parks will be set up in the first phase of PM Mitra scheme. The parks will be set up with a total investment of rupees 4445 crores so in this background let us understand some of the important points mentioned in this article 
now before getting into discussion the syllabus relevant to this discussion is given here you can go through it now firstly let us see some points about pm mitra scheme see the pm mitra scheme is inspired by 5f vision of our prime minister that is farm to fiber fiber to factory factory to fashion fashion to foreign in simple words pm mitra scheme envisions to create an integrated textile value chain right from spinning weaving processing or dyeing and printing to garment manufacturing and these are all integrated at one particular location this integrated textile value chain at one location will reduce logistics cost of industry then it will generate lakhs of direct and indirect employment then it attracts investment and it augments export potential know that the sites for pm mitra parks will be selected by a challenge method which is based on objective criteria to know about the selection process and the objective criteria you can watch our hindu news analysis dated 18th march 2023 now coming back as per recent announcement under the first phase of pm mitra scheme a large textile parks will be come up in seven states this include tamil nadu karnataka telangana madhya pradesh maharashtra gujarat and uttar pradesh okay now talking about the components of pm mitra parks see a 1000 acre plot of land will be provided by the state government for the project the parks will have 50% area for manufacturing activity then 20% area for utilities and 10% area for commercial development so the textile parks will include an incubation center and plug and play facility then developed factory sites roads power water and waste water system common processing house and other related facilities like design center testing center etc apart from this the pm mitra parks will also have workers hostels housing logistics park warehousing medical training and skill development facilities okay these are all the components of pm mitra parks now talking about the funding of pm mitra project according to the textile ministry the government of india development capital support for a green field pm mitra park will be 30 percentage of the project cost and know that this 30 percentage of project cost cannot exceed rupees 500 crores here the term developmental capital is a form of business funding which helps established businesses to grow and the term greenfield project is nothing but a brand new project developed from scratch and not based on any existing infrastructure the exact opposite to greenfield project is a brownfield one which is built upon already existing projects or other resources now talking about the funding for brownfield sites see after assessment developmental capital support at 30 percentage of project cost and other support facilities will be given with a cap of rupees 200 crore apart from developmental capital a competitiveness incentive support of rupees 300 crore will also be provided to each pm mitra park for early establishment of textiles manufacturing units see the competitiveness incentive support will be funded on a first come first serve basis So if a person does not establish his manufacturing unit sooner he will unable to claim this benefit see this incentive will be provided to manufacturing units up to 3 percentage of the total sales turnover to the unit established in the pm mitra park this incentive is also given to reduce its cost and offset its disadvantages to a certain extent and know that the pm mitra park will be developed by a special purpose vehicle know that a special purpose vehicle is a legal entity established for a specific and well defined purpose here the spv only works is the implementation of pm mitra project and know that spv is to be owned by the state government and the government of india in a public private partnership model and know that there is also one term called master developer under the pm mitra project the master developer develop the industrial park and also maintain during the concession period here the master developer is nothing but a person who have adequate capacity and experience in textile field know that the master developer is selected by a transparent process the master developer prepare the detailed project report or master plan of the pm mitra park including the core infrastructure like roads drainage sewage solid waste management treatment plants etc and know that this master plan prepared by master developer will be approved by special purpose vehicle and based on approved plan the selected sites will be released grants in aid from ministry of textiles for infrastructure development or construction of pm mitra parks this is how pm mitra scheme actually works and know that the state government has majority ownership in the special purpose vehicle 
and they are entitled to receive part of the lease rental from developed industrial sites and the state governments can use the fund later for expansion of the textile industry in the area by expanding the park then they will also provide for skill development initiatives and other welfare measures for workers using the fund so this is what going to happen in the first phase of pm mitra scheme now coming to the question how this pm mitra scheme is different from previous textile schemes see even before pm mitra scheme the textile and apparel sector has benefited from different programs like the apparel park scheme in 2002 and the scheme for integrated textile parks launched in 2005 see both the schemes supported development of common infrastructure but pm mitra is a unique initiative and the differentiating factors are the emphasis on large scale production and provisions of plug and play manufacturing centers so pm mitra is obviously different from other schemes now finally let us see some points about export potential of textile industry see indian textile and clothing exports have stagnated at around 40 billion us dollar mark over the past 4 years and it stood at 44 billion us dollars last year the government also set up an aim to achieve 100 billion us dollars in exports and target a domestic business of 250 billion us dollars by 2030 So the PM Mitra scheme will augment the government's goal and export potential of the textile sector but there are certain things that the government needed to be address see in order to maintain a joint leap in exports and domestic sales the industry must be price competitive right from the raw material stage along with that the industry should be prepared to meet the sustainability and traceability demands of international buyers if this is not met then everything will be go in vain so the state governments and developers should give trust to the pm mitra parks for sustainable and cost effective solutions for pollution control and other issues that textile industry faces apart from this the central and state governments must encourage msme units to invest in and scale up the pm mitra parks okay these are the two things that the government should address with respect to the pm mitra scheme and that's all regarding this discussion in this discussion we saw about pm mitra scheme in detail Now, with these key points in mind, let us move on to the next part of the news article discussion. That is to discuss preliminary practice questions. Now, look at this first question. This question is regarding bio transformation technology. Let's take up the first statement. Bio transformation technology is a new approach to ensure that plastic, which has escaped refuse streams, can fully biodegrade in the natural environment. As we saw in the discussion, bio transformation technology will helps to convert plastics into a biodegradable one. So, statement one is correct. Now coming to the second statement biot plastic cannot be used to pack food materials as they contain harmful substances see this statement is incorrect because biot plastics are food safe and as we saw in the discussion it can be used for food packaging also so statement 2 is incorrect now coming to the third statement biot plastics can be recycled like regular plastics see from our discussion we know that the biot plastics are recyclable in existing waste streams like regular polythene packaging so third statement is correct Here the question is asking for correct statement, so the correct answer for the question is option C, one and three only. Moving on, let's take up the second question. This question is regarding India's satellite launch vehicles. Now let's take up the first statement. PSLVs launch the satellites useful for earth resources monitoring, whereas GSLVs are designed mainly to launch communication satellites. See, this statement is actually correct. PSLV is used to launch earth observation satellites or remote sensing satellites. whereas gslvs are mainly used to launch communication satellites so statement one is correct now coming to the second statement satellite launched by pslv appear to remain permanently fixed in the same position in the sky as viewed from a particular location on earth see this statement is actually wrong because satellites launched by pslv are mostly earth observation satellite or remote sensing satellites these satellites move from pole to pole and they are not permanently fixed in the same position in the sky whereas satellites launched by gslv are mostly communication satellites they are delivered into geostationary orbit so the satellites launched by gslv is fixed in same position when we viewed from particular location on earth so second statement is incorrect now coming to the third statement gslv mk3 is a four stage launch vehicle with the first and third stages using solid rocket motors and the second and fourth stages using liquid rocket engines See, this statement is wrong because GSLV MK3 that is launch vehicle Mark 3 is a three stage heavy lift launch vehicle developed by ISRO the LVM3 that is GSLV MK3 has three stages that is it has a solid stage a core liquid booster and a cryogenic upper stage so third statement is also incorrect 
Here the question is asking for correct statement. So the correct answer for the question is option A one only. Moving on, let's take up the third question. I will read the question. The term circadian rhythm is associated with which of the following? Here four options are given. We have to find the term is related to which of the following. Know that circadian rhythms are 24 hour cycles that are part of the body's internal clock running in the background to carry out essential functions and processes. Know that one of the most important and well known circadian rhythms is the sleep to wake cycle. So the term circadian rhythm is associated with human body's internal clock. So the correct answer for the question is option A, human body's internal clock. And this is the quiz question for you today. I will post this quiz question in the community section. Try to answer it. And displayed here are the main questions for your practice. Go through the questions, write your answers and post it in the comment section. With this, we have come to the end of the video. If you liked our analysis, please like, comment and share. And don't forget to subscribe to Shankarai's Academy YouTube channel. Thank you for listening.